Bonjour. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Um, responsive resources. Um, you will have to uh, well, apologize in, in advance for uh, getting too excited about, about them. So if I do get overexcited, please do tell me to calm down a little bit. Um, why is it called responsive resources? It's uh, a section of uh, power language schools where teachers or now um, schools or local authorities directly contact us and request to have a specific resource on a specific topic. Um, so what Richard called a la carte uh, resources. No. <laughs> Wrong. Well, um, as you can see, I'm very familiar with clickers. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so we, when we started in 2012 and we gave uh, schools, that's it, um, the option of requesting um, specific resources, I thought I have picked the right job because um, Elise was flat out developing planners and Richard was flat out on the ground um, delivering training. And for the first couple of months, we got maybe two or three requests and they were very conservative type requests like we want a resource on pets or we want a resource on um, farm animals. And, um, and I thought, okay, that's going to be a very easy job. And within, Three months, and I don't know if Rose is here, but she can. She's the one receiving the emails. We were starting to get um, 10, 15, 20 requests every every week for re for topics which were be were becoming more and more adventurous. Um, so we we started f from pets going to um, discrimination or um, clearances in Scotland or. Um, the sustainable goals of uh, the United Nations or so it started going um, all over all over and became extremely excited exciting for us to um, be involved in developing these resources so what are these resources so as I mentioned lots of them between 2013 2017 we developed about 200 dossiers in, in French. So what I call a dossier is a set of resources. For instance, if someone says, uh, I want a, a, a topic on uh, mini beasts, within the topic of mini beasts, we're going to, we develop a series of resources going from um, animations, um, activities, extension activities, teachers' notes, uh, a range of activities. And again, as time goes, and as Richard mentioned, it's amazing how quickly technology is evolving and the fact that we started in 2012 with mainly animations on PowerPoints to now being able to use quite fancy animations, all sorts of apps that we can um, use to develop our resources. So this has evolved a great deal. Um, so about 200 dossiers in French, um, about 60 in Spanish and 30 in German, not that because we want to have less in other languages, but this reflects what teachers or schools have asked us to develop. Um, so the topics are divided into nine main curriculum areas, um, and that gives you an idea. These are the areas, so we have celebrations and, and festival, culture, expressive arts, health and well-being, literacy, numeracy, resources for the class, science and technology, and social <coughs> studies. And within that, so we really try to respond to the exact needs of the teacher. Um, so the teachers might contact us and say, okay, I would like to do something about ancient Greece, and I want it for my P3. Um, so if we need more information, we'll communicate with the teacher. Um, but our job is to make sure that the resources are, um, have interesting content, uh, age-appropriate content in the target language. So in a way, it's a soft, clear approach to our resources. For those of you not familiar in French, it's Emile, so content and language integrated learning. But remember, most of our teachers are non-specialist teachers. 
So again, here it's, it's making sure that beyond what they're going to introduce in a discrete way in the classroom and what resources Elise um, uh, is preparing for them in the suggested progression, we can also integrate across the curriculum a lot of um, resources that reflect what the children would be doing in English in the classroom at a certain age, a certain time in, um, in the school year. Uh, so it's finding a balance between not making, not making it too difficult language-wise, but not making it too simple content-wise, so that it remains interesting and stimulating for the children. And I'm, I'm picking up on the point um, uh, Sarah made about um, uh, looking into research as well. We have evolved in looking at what's, what's happening out there with, with languages and the fact that a language is not just there, whether it's, it's French or German or Spanish, it doesn't really matter in a way. It's really promoting the skills that languages um, um, give you and manipulate language and making links between whatever target language the teachers are working on and links with English or other languages that the children use in the classroom. So within the resources, we are integrating a lot more of that, of linking with um, other areas of the curriculum and making links with other languages as well. So children are manipulating and be, are curious about language. Um, with language content, which is sometimes beyond what you, or often what um, you would expect children age uh, three or age five or age seven to manipulate, but we realize that we can be extremely ambitious um, with our children. And the fact that it might not be, sometimes it's using the language in an incidental way, but they can still manipulate and get a lot out of it in incredibly, um, incredible topics. Um, so again, within that, um, we try to, let's say we had someone, um, we have a lot of uh, uh, Scottish topics there, so I, I think I mentioned clearances, for instance, or we had um, um, Mary Queen of Scots, or um, we, so within that, we try to, as I said, link to other areas of the curriculum. So for instance, if we're doing pets, why not do some, um, some mass, mental mass with pets as well? So we'll see that um, a bit later on. Or we also make sure that uh, within these resources, there's a space for children to do things themselves, use and then recycle for their own uh, purpose what, they, what they've been presented with. So um, I have in mind, for instance, last year, um, uh, Robert Burns, so for Burns Day, um, within the topic, uh, we encourage children to actually make their own odes to the pets in French or Spanish. So, and we, I can't remember which local authority sent us some examples of what was done around Robert Burns, but we had children presenting, uh, oh, chien, oh, chien blanc, oh, chien mignon, and, and really applying using um, uh, what they had been presented with. So it's really, really exciting to see the scope, the depth of the breadth of, of what children are doing. So before we have specific examples of how these resources are being used in some local authorities, a task for you is as you follow the presentations, maybe you want to jot down, you've got some um, post-its on your tables. If anything comes to your mind um, on the topic of embedding languages as we're presenting, questions, thoughts, suggestions, please jot it down on um, the post-its and we'll get you um, after the presentations before lunch to just put that on the boards at the back over there and that will allow us to share your ideas, your questions, etc. And then at the end of the day, um, if there are some specific questions, then hopefully we'll be able to discuss together. Uh, but what's happening now? So since last year, 
because we have already online such a huge range of um, topics, um, teachers, it looks like, are quite happy with the choice already and we ha we're getting a lot, less, a lot less requests directly from teachers. But we have been um, working <coughs> closely with development officers from different local authorities on different projects that um, they wanted to develop with, with us. So, for instance, um, Gwen, Gwen, do you want to wave? Mm -hmm. And we, we presented, uh, last year, Gwen presented that. Um, she had the initiative of a transition project between primary seven and S and secondary one uh, on the topic of superheroes. And we worked in collaboration with Gwen on that uh, topic. Um, we have this year, and that's been really exciting um, to work with Fia Padu, <coughs> who unfortunately is not here today, so she sent us a, a video to share with you. Um, Fia, in her role of uh, development officer in the Highlands, has been concentrating a lot on early learning resources and has been requesting um, specific um, dossiers, resources for early learning. She's going to tell us um, about that. No. Now, yes, and <laughs> thank you, Elise. And uh, so we have developed uh, with Thea uh, four big um, sets of resources on sea creatures, on parrots, on um, space, and we've just completed a very, very big resource on outdoor and the five senses. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Merci, Fia. Um, so, collaborative process, and really, uh, and, and again, I should say now, um, of course, she's mentioning me because I'm, I'm the direct link, but I'm not Wonder Woman, and I'm, I'm working with a brilliant team of of developers. Uh, we have native speakers um, of, for all languages working with us um, to help us develop. <laughs> um, to help us with the development of all the resources. And, um, and before we show you one quick animation, um, I suppose one great advantage of what we're doing with teachers and with uh, development officers is the flexibility we have in, in doing, in responding to the exact need of, um, of the team. So as Fia mentioned, she wanted specific um, work, she wanted to work around specific vocabulary and uh, she wanted a song and, and a story around that. Well, of course, you can't find a, a ready-made song on uh, starfish, crab, and uh, dolphin. So <laughs> it gives us, um, we have the flexibility to, within um, the, 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 the vocabulary that she wanted absolutely to have because they were going to do that core language um, in English at a later stage, we have the flexibility to make a little song and to record it or to make an animation. Um, what we're going to show you now is uh, a little anim animation which is the, the combination of all the elements um, which Thea wanted in the theme of space into a little story. Um, so it is mm -hmm. if you could... Okay, so that just gives you an example of a little uh, bits of storytelling we can do. Remember, it's for three, four, two to four years old, mm -hmm. and it's really bringing the language in context. It goes beyond uh, this is a star. Or, so the, the two, three years old, again, why not go s be outside and spot a satellite? Un satellite de quelle couleur? So we're bringing together all the elements that Thea wanted to have. And gradually, in every topic, we're adding a little bit more. So we're re revising greetings, revising colors, revising numbers. And we build, build up and build up. Uh, and each story gets a little bit uh, bigger. And it was just to finish on that one with uh, early learning. Uh, it was interesting uh, when Fia said, um, in outdoors and five senses, or 
Um, there's lots of resources, including, and, and, and she is so excited about the flashcards because she wants mini flashcards and big, flash, big flashcards because, um, because as she knows, and as we all know, teachers don't have time to make this sort of material. But for us, it's trying to um, uh, give lots of ideas beyond just showing a, a flashcard. What, what can you do? What sort of exciting activity can you do with flashcards? Storytelling, sequencing, etc. And And our job is also to make sure that we have, uh, we, we suggest um, activities beyond bingo or beyond, uh, let's show a, a flash. I, mean, I mean, I've got nothing, there's nothing wrong with bingo, <laughs> but there's lots of things that we can bring or beyond um, singing the same song to the same tune all the time. We can bring a lot of um, um, stimulating and motivating material, even for the little ones, and that is really um, exciting.